Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday morning to you, and welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. I do appreciate you being with me. Hey, don't forget, tomorrow, Friday, I will be continuing my review and response to Mr. Paul Ellis's book, AD 70 and the End of the World. That will be number two uh, in, in that series, so you don't want, to, uh, don't want to miss that. And by the way, uh, after I have finished the review and responding to uh, Mr. Ellis's book, I will be responding uh, to Mr. Bruce Gore's videos. Uh, I really, really appreciate so much of what he has to say. And, you know, uh, I've had people contact me privately and just tell me uh, it was a, a direct result of Paul Ellis's material as well as Bruce Gore's material that led me to being a full preterist. Well, Amen. Uh, folks, I don't see how you can say some of the things that you do, as Mr. Ellis does and as Bruce Gore does, I don't see how you can take the positions that you do and remain a futurist. I couldn't. I tried it. I tried to be a partial preterist. It just doesn't work. And I'm trying to illustrate that to you by our examination of the Lord's coming as a thief. Remember now. A foundational argument for the division of Matthew chapter 24, 4 to 34, and verse 35 and into chapter 25, verse 46. <clears throat> Pardon me. A foundational argument there is, look, in verses 4 to 34, Jesus gave signs of his coming. But then in Matthew 20, 24, 35 and following, he talks about the end of the, t end of the world. Now, look, this is one of the basic presuppositions foundational presuppositions of Mr. Ellis's own book. Notice A.D. 70 and the end of the world. Folks, Jesus wasn't talking about the end of the world. I'll have more to say about that tomorrow. But so many commentators down through history, oh yeah, Jesus is talking about the end of the world. So it is assumed that when Jesus talked about that the Lord that talked about his coming as a thief, in Matthew 24, uh, 43, that he is contrasting his coming in verses 4 to 34, in which he gave signs. So, signs of AD 70, no signs of the end of the world, because after all, the Lord said he was coming as a thief. Over the last couple of weeks, I've been sharing with you an in-depth examination of this concept of the Lord's coming as a thief. Now, let me remind you, again, we're almost out of time in August, my three-book special, my two brand-new books, Paul on Trial, Paul the Pharisees and the Resurrection, Watching for the Parousia, Were Jesus' Apostles Confused? By the way, Mr. Ellis says they were. They thought they were asking about one thing when they really weren't. They were talking about... Uh, the Lord was talking about something different. They thought one thing. He thought another. So, yes, they were confused. And can God tell time? Now, <clears throat> if you purchase these separately, that would cost you $50. For the rest of this month, August 2020, U.S. orders only, total delivered price, $25. And if you already have... Can God tell time? Or if you would just prefer he came as a thief, send me a note when you place your order that says, Hey, Don, I'd really like to substitute he came as a thief for can God tell time? So we have covered a real good bit of territory. <clears throat> but what have we seen in regard to the Lord's coming as a thief? Well, we have seen that there is a sense of urgency and imminence associated with it. In Luke chapter 12, Jesus spoke of his coming as a thief, and he spoke to his apostles, his living, breathing apostles, and he says, Therefore have your loins girt up, and your lamps trimmed, and be watchful, for you do not know the hour in which your Lord is coming, and if you do not watch, he will come upon you as a thief. Folks, the, the language there cannot be misconstrued. It cannot be twisted or perverted. Well, you can pervert it, but that's exactly what it amounts to. 
And when we consider that Peter, in 1 Peter, was urging his audience later in that very same generation, therefore gird up the loins of your mind and be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he goes ahead to say in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 5, that Christ was ready to judge the living and the dead. He said that the end of all things has drawn near, verse 7, and he says the appointed time for the judgment has arrived, 1 Peter 4, 17. So when you couple Luke chapter 12 with 1 Peter, there is literally no possibility when we use proper exegesis, proper hermeneutic, proper logic, there is no way to divorce the thief coming of Luke chapter 12 from the first century, an eminent context. We have verified that with an examination of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. After saying twice, twice in 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 15 and verse 17, and saying, we who are, present active indicative, alive and remain until the coming of the Lord, I mean, how many, how many times does Paul have to say this generation will not pass until it comes? And then in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, now concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, brethren, you have no need that anyone write to you because you know perfectly well that the day of the Lord comes as a thief at night for when they say peace and safety. You see, he was talking to people who were not in darkness but in light. In other words, they had knowledge that others did not have, that others would not believe. So when we look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and chapter 5, we have two unequivocal statements that the coming of the Lord as a thief would be in that generation, and the Thessalonians knew about it. We have examined 2 Peter chapter 3, in the light of, of the coming of the Lord as a thief, the scoffers, in light of 2 Peter chapter 2, which unequivocally states that judgment was coming soon, rapidly, and quickly. Their judgment was not slumbering. And I've posed this question. <clears throat> Is the coming of the Lord as a thief a different thief coming from that in Luke chapter 12? Well, if you say it is, then you're admitting that the thief coming in Luke chapter 12 it was a first century event. Well, if you admit that Luke chapter 12 is a first century event because of the language of eminence, then when we couple 2 Peter chapter 3 with the language of eminence of 2 Peter chapter 2, that blows the distinction completely out of the water. And I have shown you that when we look at this language of the coming of the Lord as a thief in light of Revelation chapter 16, that the Lord's thief coming was to be at the time of the judgment of Babylon, which was Old Covenant Jerusalem. It was to be at the time of the vindication of the martyrs, which was to be in A.D. 70, Matthew 23. And it was to be at the time of the wedding of the Lamb, which was to be at the time of the judgment of the city that persecuted the saints, which was Old Covenant Jerusalem. I want to suggest to you folks, there is literally not one shred, not one iota, not one alpha, not one omega of evidence to suggest that the Lord's thief coming is to be linked or predictive of the end of the world. Remember, the destruction of Jerusalem, Babylon, would be at the time of the destruction of creation, which is 2 Peter chapter 3, but the Lord's coming at the time of the judgment of Babylon, to reiterate, is the judgment of Jerusalem, the time of the vindication of the martyrs, at the judgment of Jerusalem, at the time of the wedding all in A.D. 70. I hope you've enjoyed this study of the Lord's thief coming. I hope that it's in, helped enlighten you to understand that subject better. And don't forget, in the three-book special, once one more time, okay, normally these three books would cost you $50 purchased separately. 
for the month of August 2020, U.S. orders only, total delivered price, $25. If you want the Thief Coming book, all you've got to do, instead of the God Tell Time book, I can't include them both, right? Okay, so if you want to substitute, he came as a thief for Can God Tell Time, when you order, just send me a note, and I'll be glad to do the substitution. Okay, don't forget, tomorrow I will continue our study, our review, and our response to Mr. Paul Ellis's book, 8070 and the End of the World. You don't want to miss it, so I will see you on the flip side.